Rotating ICLs is something we very rarely need to do because prevention is the best treatment. Ways to avoid needing to rotate a toric ICL include accurate sizing, accurate refraction with cross-reference to the topography, and accurate placement of the toric marks in the first place. We mark the toric axis using a slit lamp with a patient sat up before surgery. Iris registration or digital methods are nice if you have them. The next step is identifying the need to rotate an ICL. Mixed refraction is a classic sign. Also, dilate and reference the toric marks to what was originally planned. It's generally good to not be too eager to do something and monitor for stability with multiple refractions. Stability includes the ICL axis, making sure it's not actively rotating can tell you if you need to change sizes. Once committed to re-intervention, we decide if we need to size up to prevent further rotation. It can be a complex decision and dependent on morphology of the anterior chamber and the angles. Resources like astigmatism fix or toric aligner can help determine if rotating the ice sealed back will solve the problem or if cylinder power needs to be changed. Usually rotating is an acceptable first step unless the vault is low and the angles are super open and the lens could obviously be sized up. Also, if the ICL rotates more than once, that's a good sign to size up if possible. Here's an example where we use astigmatismfix.com and it's telling us that the ideal axis for this toric ICL is 142 degrees. So to rotate this lens, we mark with a fine tip pen. The original wounds can usually be reopened just by finding the same plane. And then after filling the AC with OVD, peripheral motions are preferred and the ICL is spun in a rocking method, shifting it in the sulcus. So you can see here we're pushing and pulling using the sulcus space to provide a little extra room to rotate the ICL around. A key here is avoiding any posterior pressure that would contact the lens. You can also use a siski and the peripheral fenestration to keep spinning, but obviously be extra cautious of the lens capsule. Here's an example of rotating a lens 90 degrees before extracting it for routine cataract surgery. Normally they don't need to be rotated this much, but it's a good example of the general technique, maybe with just less posterior pressure. Eye seals have a power up to four diopters of cylinder in the United States, which is about three-ish at the ICL plane. If you suspect or Stella suggests that there will be a residual sill, it's important to discuss that it will be a two-stage procedure with the patient. Although I've been surprised by excellent vision in patients where I was expecting an LVC touch-up, so it's possible just debulking the sill may bring them into a 20 happy range. For sill that's going to be over four diopters, we use a little math to plan the ablation starting from myopia. So we plan to aim for a spherical equivalent using a formula of sill minus four divided by two. So six diopters of sill, we would aim minus one. We've even decided to plan all astigmatism correction with LVC if it's a big myopic debulking and it will need to be a two-stage procedure regardless. These are off-label uses though, so it's important to discuss this with the patient also. LVC is another good approach to rotated ICLs after thoroughly confirming stability of the axis. ICLs are so fun because there's a lot of art to it as we can see.